So now I want to go into our lecture on coronavirus. Now I am not an MD, I am not a medical expert, so I am going to try to keep this lecture as simple as possible um, from our standpoint here in kinesiology. And so there is an article that um, for some classes are accompanied this, um, a rampage through the body. So we're going to look at what COVID-19 does to the human body as far as we know. Okay, um, Things are changing day by day. We're learning more about this virus day by day, week by week, month by month. So COVID-19. And you might be asking yourself, why in the world do we wear masks? Okay, Well, about a hundred years ago, Spanish flu took over and masks were implemented to help people keep people safe then. Well, we're now wearing masks now, not only to keep ourselves safe, but others safe, right? As believers in Christ, our body is our temple. So we're to take care of our bodies. So wearing a mask is one way to safeguard ourselves against the unknown of this virus. But also, we are our brother's keeper. See, we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. So that's another reason why we wear a mask, is to protect the person next to us. And so without going into politics or anything like that, which it has become in our society, it's a political statement now, but from a medical standpoint, wearing a mask has been proven to lower your, mid, uh, your risk of catching coronavirus by 82%. Because we're finding it's a respiratory issue, hence the SARS. So, how is COVID transmitted? Well, we know two things for certain can help slow the spread and slow transmission. Okay, first and foremost, that is close proximity. So, we know if we are staying six feet or greater away from somebody, our risk is lower. In addition to that, it's also the amount of time we are exposed to that person, anything greater than 15 minutes. So for example, if I'm just walking down the sidewalk past someone who has COVID, the likelihood of myself getting COVID from that person is very low. Whereas we sit in the same exact room, maybe on a couch together or a bus together for greater than 15 minutes, my risk goes through the roof compared to just walking past them. And you might ask yourself why. Well, let's examine simply um, just everyday breathing. Okay. Um, when you exhale, okay, studies are finding if you have COVID that to get infected, only 1,000 to 2,000 COVID droplets or viral particles are required to be inspired or inhaled to get infected. It's not a lot. Because in everyday life, every time you exhale a single breath, you're going to release anywhere from 50 to 5,000 droplets with that expiration. And that is a large range, and that's simply due to right how deep of a breath you took, how strong of an exhale it was. In addition, let's talk about coughing and sneezing. Okay, Anytime you cough or sneeze, especially in class, you need to cover yourself. Cough into your elbow, sneeze into your elbow. Why? Because when you cough, about 3,000 droplets are expired in that cough. In addition, it's moving at 50 miles an hour. So that's, that's pretty fast, especially if you drive. You know how fast 50 miles an hour it is. So that's why it's greater than six feet, because I'm, in a minute I'm going to show you a video that demonstrates these particles. And I'm going to give you a description as the video is playing. Now when you sneeze, you're releasing about 10 times that of a cough, about 30,000 droplets moving at 200 miles an hour. That is a high rate of speed. That is NASCAR speed, okay, or drag racing speed. Okay, it is moving very, very fast. And if you only need 1,000 to 2,000 COVID viral particles to, uh, for transmission, well, 30,000 droplets, that's 30 times that amount that you need to be infected. And 200 miles an hour, all we have to do is some simple math to see how far those droplets are going to travel, hence the six feet, and hence the amount of time exposed. Now this video is going to demonstrate what these uh, viral particles look like. So this is just a normal sneeze, 
and you'll notice the distance from the individual's mouth to the end of the timetable. That's 20 inches, so less than two feet. You'll notice there's several particles that are traveling downward and several particles that are traveling in a more parallel direction, A, due to gravity, but also due to the particle size. So the more dense particles or the bigger particles are falling sooner, whereas the smaller, lighter particles are traveling a further distance. Now what we're finding is that we believe these COVID particles are a little bit lighter, so they're going to travel a little bit further. So here's a sneeze over 43 inches, so just about three and a half feet. You can notice how much the particles linger in the air and how long it takes. Now granted, this is slow motion. So when you sneeze, it is imperative that you sneeze into your elbow in your mask or else these particles are floating in the air for someone else to inspire. Here's a sneeze at 23 to 26 feet from the individual to the particle. So you can see how far that traveled. So again, when you sneeze, that is going to cause the most liability to spreading the particles. That is why we have plexiglasses up protecting the professors um, because they are going to be the ones that are most vulnerable not y'all in your seats. The professors, okay, um, are most vulnerable, not only just because of age, but we're also in the front of the classroom. Now, what does the mask do? Okay, the mask is protecting not only yourself, but again, the people around you. So which, which mask is most effective? So if we're looking at this chart here, you'll notice that the N95 mask is very very good okay so the amount of droplets that come out of that mask very small followed by the surgical mask which most people are wearing and then just the homemade cotton mask those three are the top three masks in terms of uh, protecting against droplets being expired when you're talking now you'll notice that some people wear bandanas bandanas do not protect anybody else as great as the N95, the surgical, and the polycotton. So when you wear a bandana, okay, when you talk, when you cough, when you're sneeze, sneezing, you might as well not even be wearing a mask at all. So you're not really helping anybody else out. Thus, a surgical or a homemade cotton mask are going to reduce these droplet counts by 95%. So again, as believers in Christ, we are a brother's keeper. So love thy neighbor as thyself. So if I'm wearing a mask, I want to wear one that is going to protect the people around me. Because I would feel awful if I was asymptomatic with COVID, didn't know it, wasn't wearing a mask or a bandana, and was around somebody for 15 minutes, less than six feet, and I transmitted the virus to them. I would feel awful about that. And so that's what masks do. That's why we wear masks. So another... Um, study was done by Florida Atlantic University, my alma mater. Uh, go Owls. And they did a study on mannequins and masks. The new study about face masks catching our attention today. Researchers at Florida Atlantic University creating this animation showing the effectiveness of different types of masks. They used a mannequin to simulate coughing or sneezing and a laser to detect how far the droplets travel, eight feet with no mask. They tested several kinds of masks, a single layer bandana, the droplets went three and a half feet, an over-the-counter cone-shaped mask, about eight inches, and the homemade two-layer quilting cotton mask, the best one so far, only 2.5 inches. So, who is the greatest risk for a COVID infection? Let's kind of break this down because it's been very confusing um, across the media since March and since this has come to our home turf. Now what you're looking at is three different graphs based out of California. Why California? Because California is a hot spot and it's one of the most densely populated states in our nation. So if you're looking at this chart, okay, 18 to 34 year olds. Why am I pointing out? Because that's our age demographic. That's your age demographic. Okay, 35% of total cases in California was your age demographic. However, let's look at the deaths. Most of the deaths for California were 
let's just say 65 plus. Why? Well, there can be a number of reasons why. Pre-existing medical conditions, maybe high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, respiratory issues, uh, compromised or weakened immune systems, right? As we age, we have more health issues. Whereas when we're younger, you'll notice the percentage of cases, say 17 and below, is less than eight, less than 9% total. We have a healthier immune system. We have less underlying conditions. So I want you to hold on to that, put that in your back pocket, because we're going to revisit that um, and discuss why this might be, um, what our health is like in America pre-COVID, and what are some things that can change um, outside of this whole COVID ep epidemic, and what COVID has actually brought light to about Americans' health in general. So understanding your risk and my risk. Okay, so what we are believing and what we are understanding based on all the studies and research is that COVID-19 enters your cell via the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor or ACE2 receptor for short. That's how we're going to refer to it for now. Okay, uh, so these receptors are all throughout your body on the endothelial lining of your cells. Okay, and what we believe is that as you age your body develops more of these ACE2 receptor enzymes, okay? Especially as you age over 17, as you come into adulthood. So this is why we're seeing that 18 to 34 year old, uh, really anything over 18 is at a higher risk um, for COVID compared to say anyone under 17, children, youth, teenagers. And so in brief, um, ACE2 is all throughout the body, and we believe that basically what it does, it helps regulate blood pressure, okay? Uh, and it marks tissues um, that are vulnerable to infection to help protect because what it does is that this virus uh, needs more of these ACE2 receptors to enter the cell. So essentially, these ACE2 receptors are like a doorknob or a door. So I'm sitting in my office right now, and if my office was the inside of the cell, the door essentially would be that ACE2 receptor. And if the virus is outside and I had a plethora of ACE2 receptors, that's going to allow the virus to come in. So the more ACE2 receptors you have, the higher risk you have of the virus coming into your cells, as you can see here. So the corona or the crown, so this spike here, which I'll talk about in a little bit, attaches to that ACE2 receptor, enters the cell, and then the rampage on your body, if you will, commences. And I'll talk about what that looks like. So let's understand your risk and my risk. So to recap, after 17 years of age, the ACE2 receptor increases every year after. Right? We know that it uh, plays a role in blood pressure. So if you think critically, what do we know about people as they age? Specifically, maybe in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. What do we know about their blood pressure? Their blood pressure might increase, yes. Well, with increased blood pressure, there's an increase of ACE2. See the correlation? So, uh, unless you have an immunocompromised system, the person greatest at risk for COVID-19 when you're in person is the professor because they're older than, than most students, right? Most of y'all are between the 18, maybe 22, 23 in that ballpark. Whereas the average age demographic of professors on campus here might be late 40s to early 50s. So they're gonna be already be at a higher risk of higher blood pressure, maybe a cardiovascular or respiratory diseases. There might be um, professors that might be obese, or have diabetes, so they have a larger predisposal and compromised immune system, putting them at greater risk, which is why we are asking for you young people to wear masks here um, on campus, because you could be asymptomatic and not know it. And so that leads me asymptomatic. What does that mean? It's basically, um, you don't know that you have it. Okay, and that's the hard part about COVID-19 is 
if you're asymptomatic, you might feel perfectly fine. And we may not even know that you can spread the virus. In fact, I was reading a study the other day. It's about 75% of people 18 to 30 are asymptomatic. 40 to 45% uh, of asymptomatic people in general, not based on age, just in general, make up about that 40 to 45% of the overall infections. So basically, you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. You'll be carrying the, the virus, but you don't know it. That's the danger, and that's the mystery of COVID-19, which is why, again, we wear masks. And so we saw um, last night, I, I was reading an article, uh, Minnesota, they had mandated a statewide mask order, and what happened? Cases dropped. It shows that masks work. Masks and six feet, social distancing. Okay, when you're asymptomatic, you can transmit this virus up to 14 days to somebody. So which is why we're asking folks to, to quarantine. That's why people have been asked to be quarantined if they show any signs and symptoms. That is why you're using your LiveSafe app every single day. And it's also imperative that you are transparent and honest in how you feel. Because if you are showing any signs and symptoms, which yes, I know many of those signs and symptoms are just like the flu or just like the cold, okay? Um, but it's imperative um, that you are honest in that out of protection, again, for the person on your left and your right. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Okay? Now, asymptomatic infections can be associated with lung abnormalities. So, for example, um, just because you're asymptomatic doesn't mean it, that COVID stand, still can't wreak havoc on uh, your respiratory system. So, for example, here is an image okay, of a 35-year-old who is asymptomatic, okay, and she had these glass opacities in the lower lobe of her lung. So essentially, this was inhibiting um, her respiratory system, but she, she didn't know it. Another case was I was talking to a friend on Monday, had a 21-year-old 20 relative, tested positive, but was asymptomatic, and two weeks after they tested positive, passed away from complete organ failure. And so that's the rampage of COVID on the human body. We don't fully understand it yet, but it affects not just the respiratory system, but other major organs, liver, kidneys, brain, heart, right? From, again, what we are understanding is that ACE2 uh, the ACE2 receptors, they're lining the endothelial walls of your cells, Okay, some of these major organs, which I'll get to in a moment, have more ACE2 receptors. Thus, that virus can enter that cell and wreak havoc upon it. Okay, so COVID-19 is referred to, referred to as SARS-CoV-2 virus. So SARS, what does that stand for? You might have heard that before. Probably heard it maybe a decade ago when the swine flu um, broke out. But SARS, all it stands for is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And so the coronavirus is very, very small, as we see here um, in this picture. It's about 10,000 times smaller than the width of your human hair, which is very, very small. And so what happens is when it enters your cell, so for example here you're looking at a kidney cell in the orangish color, those blue dots are representative of the coronavirus particles themselves. And so what happens is it tends to duplicate and spread and spread. So if I don't know if any of you have seen, again, I'm a Disney, I like Disney. So if you've seen uh, the second Wreck-It Ralph, uh, there's a scene where Wreck-It Ralph lets a virus into the internet in order to you know, save uh, or destroy a game that to save Penelope. Um, so they can be best friends, and he spreads and spreads and spreads, and more Ralph and more Ralph, more Ralph. Same thing as any type of virus in your body that begins to spread. These particles begin to spread and take over whatever host cell uh, it is. So in this case of the picture, the kidney cell. Okay, and it releases more viruses, uh, uh, virus particles, excuse me, and then transmits it to others. And so that is essentially what happens when it enters your cell. So here's a picture of the viral particle. 
again, you'll you'll notice here. Um, this is the crown, okay? Hence Corona in in Spanish, um, and it is made up of a glycoprotein. So glycoprotein is comprised of a polysaccharide chain, some carbohydrates, protein being protein, and a little bit of fat, okay? And then the RNA is resting inside. And so what happens is this SARS-CoV-2, when it attaches to that ACE2 receptor, okay, that ACE2 receptor, as you see here, like I said, is a doorknob, and it allows it to enter its host cell. So that angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 attaches via the crown of the viral particle, attaches to that ACE2 receptor via the epithel epithelial cell, excuse me, Thus, if you have more ACE2 cells, thus if you are older, you have more entry points for this virus to enter your cells and wreak havoc upon the body, as you see here in this picture. So maybe here on the left, this might be somebody who's younger, maybe 17, versus somebody on the right. This could be someone who might be in their late 20s, early 30s. You can notice the difference between the amount of receptors. The more receptors you have, the more viral particles can attach and enter whatever host cell there is. So in this image it's the case of the respiratory system in the lungs. So just another image here for you. You can see all these ACE2 receptors can allow the virus in. That's what we are believing allows it into the cell. So the question is, when it ha attaches to the ACE2 receptor, then what happens? Well, we know it enters the cell. I've been saying it all lecture. But, but what happens? So you'll see here, again, the, the crown is going to attach to the ACE2 receptor. Okay? And so this spike essentially splits. And what happens is this RNA now begins to enter the cell. So the virus RNA invades the cell and then begins to replicate like we saw in that picture previously in the, the orange and brown of the kidneys. Now, here are various organs of the body, lung, heart, eye, liver, okay? All of these that you see here have a high amount or a large expression of the ACE2 receptor. And so, for example, your nose or your mouth, they have a large amount of ACE2 receptors. So naturally, when you inspire, if you're around somebody who is COVID positive, you inhale those viral particles, and then it enters your nasal cavity, down the trachea, into the lungs, and then it can continue to spread there. So age, gender, and smoking status play a role or are mediators, if you will, um, with COVID, okay? And I'll, and I'll talk about that a little bit more here. So this is the expression or the amount of ACE2 receptors in the different organs of the body. So colon, this is one reason why we believe we might see nausea um, associated with uh, COVID as a symptom. Um, in the article, Rampage Throughout the Body, um, it talks about the possibility of corona being spread through fecal matter. For example, when you flush a toilet, the water particles go into the air. There's also some fecal matter in those particles. We don't really know the full extent of it though. So what does this imply? This graph implies that once COVID enters the body, okay, it can wreak havoc on a variety of uh, cells, which then spreads through system by system, which is why we are seeing a plethora of people that who have severe cases, vital organs shutting down. In the case of the 21 year old, right, they did an autopsy and they found that major organs, lungs, heart, kidneys, liver, had blood clots all throughout. So you might have seen in, in some studies or in the media that's talking about um, blood clotting and they found a lot of clotting. It could be a circulatory issue, but we do know it starts as a respiratory issue and then spreads systematically cell by cell, organ by organ, depending upon the severity of the case. So this graph here looks at the expression of the ACE2 or the amount of ACE2 receptors in your mouth. So your tongue. 
Your tongue has a plethora of ACE2 receptors. Corona can attach to the tongue, enter the cells, same looking at the floor of the mouth or the base of the tongue, or around your mouth. And so again, breathe it in through the mouth or breathe it in through the nose. Okay, this just shows that your mouth is a high risk area for infectious uh, for infection via COVID. So, uh, when it comes to ACE2 receptors, what is a big factor? Age, right? As well as the number of ACE2 and the density. So density meaning you have a large amount in a confined space. Well, here are some other variables that increase the number of ACE2 receptors that you have. Age, like I said, right? Blood pressure alters with age. We know that ACE2 plays a role in blood pressure regulation, right? It's lining many of the epithelial uh, lining of your cells. Gender, men are typically at, have higher amounts of ACE2 receptors compared to females. That's a possible reason why we might see men um, have higher um, percentage of cases with COVID. We don't know for sure. Hypertension or high blood pressure smokers, people with diabetes, and clinically obese. Now, let's take COVID out of this. Looking at this chart, just hypertension, smoking, diabetes, obesity alone. I want you to think, what is the number one killer in the U.S. right now from a health standpoint? Cardiovascular disease, heart attack, cardio, uh, cardiac arrest, arrhythmias, atherosclerosis. So those last four, hypertension, smoking, diabetes, obesity, these are health issues that are rampant in American society to begin with. Roughly 36% of the nation is obese. 60% are overweight. Throw COVID on top of it, these people now are at even higher risk of not only catching COVID, but possibly uh, passing away from it due to having multiple underlying conditions. Again, this is why we wear a mask. But if we take a step outside of COVID, I want you to ask yourself, what are some things we can do as an American society, as kinesiology majors, to help educate the public? to help lower blood pressure. Smoking, right? That is a behavior that leads to poor health. Diabetes, depending upon the type, right? Poor diet, high sugar diet, lack of exercise can lead to that. Same thing with obesity. Obesity is through the roof. Whether it's an onset of technology, convenience, lack of physical activity, maybe lack of resources maybe lacking finances. So there's a plethora of reasons why these exist in our society today. Finances, social, economical stature, where you live, right? Um, so those are all things that play a role into that. And so what you're seeing here, again, is we saw this picture earlier, the upregulation of the ACE2 receptors, more of them, more virus can enter the cells. Well, the same thing with smokers. Okay, Smokers have a higher amount of ACE2 expressions, which okay, allows for more ACE2 um, to enter the system. Or excuse me, more uh, coronavirus particles to enter your cell. Okay in addition to hypertension and diabetes. So subjects that have conditions, two or more diseases, two or more health issues, maybe someone is obese and has diabetes, they're gonna be at higher risk for COVID-19. Which begs, what does this tell us about our American society? That is something I just addressed. We are not healthy as a whole. So how can we as kinesiology majors impact this in the future? How can we help people in the future 
combat how can we combat diabetes how can we combat high blood pressure how can we combat um, cardiovascular disease how can we combat obesity because there are health implications on the line for these individuals that might have one or two or more of these underlying conditions. Now I'm going to show you a video that is going to kind of recap everything I spoke on, but also um, just show you what happens when COVID enters the nasal cavity. So here you can see it's just a basic chest x-ray, someone with COVID-19 pneumonia. So you can look on the right, you can see how the mucus builds up. You can see how the capillaries are compromised. That's where that gas exchange occurs. Okay, nutrients are exchanged there. Waste products are exchanged there. Okay, you can see the immune, cell, uh, immune cells in blue trying to, to fight. And then you can see the small, small, small blue, which represents the uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, viral particles. Okay, so we can see how it wreaks havoc upon the lungs. And this is how lung complications arise, such as pneumonia or, like we saw in the video, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Okay, and even sepsis, and sepsis is lethal um, in the body. So, again, this is why we wear masks um, to aid in the spread of COVID. Okay, lungs are the ground zero. When it comes to COVID-19, that is the battleground. However, like I said, based on the ACE2 receptors, it can spread from tissue to tissue, organ system to organ system, brain to blood vessels. Um, there was a theory why some people lose um, taste or sense of smell. Um, in one article I was reading, they believe that it possibly could travel up the olfactory to the brain, affecting taste and smell. Um, that's what just one article was talking about I was reading. But... Because it starts in the lungs, it can also cause other medical comp complications, causing blood clots, inflammation of the brain, heart inflammation, acute liver injury, um, acute kidney um, injury, which could um, play a role in somebody have to now go on dialysis, sepsis, and then essentially multi-inflammation syndrome in children, which is something newer that we're finding, um, but. The whole body is affected um, by COVID based on the severity uh, of each infection. Okay, so for example, with COVID uh, in the heart, there was a study that looked at MRIs of the cardi uh, cardiac MRIs of 100 people who had recovered from COVID, and they compare them to images of 100 people who were not infected by the heart. And so on average, okay, uh, the age demographic was about 49. Roughly 66% of those patients recovered at home, the other third um, in the hospital. What they found is two months later, these infected patients were more likely to have troubling cardiac signs, okay, um, that signaled that of CVD over heart attack, okay. They had actual physical alterations to their heart structure. 
and some of them had trauma to their heart that was similar to that of a post-myocardium infarction or heart attack. And 60 of those 78 patients had uh, inflammation or swelling of the heart, which tells us, again, that COVID um, is a mystery in terms that it affects everybody differently, um, but it also affects various organs of the body. Okay, 20 to 50 percent of patients with severe COVID okay, go into kidney failure and require dialysis. There are some hospitals that are short on dialysis machines. Okay, what does it do to the brain? Okay, so as, as I said earlier, ACE2 receptors are found through organs throughout your body, they're also found in the neural cortex and your brain stem. So, um, you're looking here that I had a 50 year old woman, excuse me, she had COVID um, encephalitis in the brain and she had tissue to the brain, okay? And so it creates this storm and affects every organ differently, causing inflammation in some organs like the heart or the brain, which could lead to acute or chronic dizziness. It could lead to acute or short-term memory loss or even a loss of smell. And so this is the mystery of COVID-19. So it can also bind to the endothelial lining of your blood vessels, which is we see, which is causing the blood clots. Okay, as inflammation occurs, vasoconstriction occurs, and then blood clots begin to, to form. Okay, so we see the ACE, ACE2 receptor enters the endothelial cell and we begin to clot. And so anytime we clot, now we have a higher risk for stroke, we have a higher risk of heart attack. And so now when maybe someone goes in to the hospital had a heart attack, right, we do an autopsy or we test for COVID, well, COVID was the main culprit. Or was it the heart attack? So a heart attack and stroke can now be at increased risk due to, especially with somebody with COVID-19, okay, due to the blood clotting effect. It's going to cause a blockage in your blood vessels, giving someone a stroke or heart attack. So maybe COVID-19 should be called a novel respiratory-based systematic inflammatory pathogen. That's a mouthful. So in other words, it starts in the lungs, starts in the respiratory system, and can spread into your heart and blood vessels, which can spread to your brain, can affect your eyes, your nose, your liver, your kidneys, and your intestines. So every major organ can be affected by COVID-19. And so we are just now beginning to learn the scope of this virus. I, I, I hope and you all hope that a vaccine is around the corner. Um, this could happen at the end of the year. It could take another year. Who knows? But I know, like Joshua 1.9 says, um, that God has, knows the plans to not, to, for us not to fear, to be strong and courageous. Uh, and during this time, we need to do our due diligence. We need to do our due diligence. Um during this time um, to make sure that we are our brother's keeper and we are doing our societal responsibility, wearing masks, keeping each other safe here, not only in campus, but in Charleston um, as well. So this is the COVID-19 lecture. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me or message me uh, for my virtual office hours uh, via Slack.